Hi everyone, I'm Ibu Karel, Head of Partnerships at Folks Finance. We got the core team um, still here in the audience, so grateful for everybody who's sticking around. Um, yeah, uh, happy to talk about, the original talk was going to be do's and don'ts of building a startup. Um, and now we're gonna do something different, answer some questions possibly about building a startup or uh, going to market, growing the product. I don't know, it's up to Ava what she wants to do. Of course. Well, the first idea was to make it this dynamic so you can participate with us, you can learn with us, we can learn from Ivo from his experience. Well, first finance started a long time ago. Uh, we saw you growing, we saw every challenge that you made, but we would like to learn more in deep. Uh, so, why DeFi? Why you choose a startup on DeFi? And why building that DeFi on Algorand? DeFi is really, really promising, um, almost like a gold mine of opportunity in terms of you can clearly see an established industry, finance, money, you know, been around since the beginning of civilization. And now you have a new way of interacting with it and a new way of building channels within it and building the ways that it will move around and interact with our world. So overall, like the invention of smart contracts following the invention of blockchains really opened up just a huge, huge window. And I think it's still so early in the DeFi journey of industry that um, it was really clear to the creators of folks finance that it was a good idea to um to create a DeFi protocol now the way it got to algorand was the founder of blockchain italia um became good friends with silvio they're both from sicily so i think because they're both italian this was early early days of algorand almost no uh, DeFi landscape to speak of. I think when they met, there probably were not even DeFi apps. I think it was pre-DeFi on Algorand. And the goal was to build a lending, excuse me, a lending protocol because lending is just such a key aspect of uh, any financial ecosystem. You need somewhere to be able to put assets and borrow assets. So I think that's where it started. And um, we've come a long way and built a lot more. Um, and yeah, I'd be happy to talk about that stuff. Yeah, well, that sounds very interesting about like uh, knowing about Algorand in those early days. M I mean, it probably was very exciting. Uh, so now, like uh, you, you got that idea about like uh, DeFi is that gold mining that I totally agree. I, I consider myself a digit, so I, I really know what you're talking about. But then when you start like uh, building that MVP and building the product that now is Fox Finance shining and, and brilliant, what what were your, your first thoughts about uh, having that MVP and uh, start like, uh, building actually the product? Um, so yeah, Fox launched originally as just lending and borrowing. Yeah. So that was the MVP, super um, basic tool uh, with only the bare minimum of features included in it. You could deposit algo, borrow a couple other assets, um, but it served purpose for that time. Then the thing that really boosted folks into you know, a protocol, I think it, when we first launched, which was April, 2022, we had about like 3 million on the platform for a couple months. The following quarter was when we launched the liquid governance with Gialgo. That was what really took the product to another level of adoption. Um, and then we iterated on Gialgo to make it a better version, essentially, that you know you don't need to switch out every quarter. It just stays uh, indefinitely. And then that really took it to another level again. So starting from the MVP, we knew that the lending was key, but because of the easy access yield on Algorand through governance, there had to be tools built to access that. Now, other tools were also built by competitors at the time, AlgoFi, Guard, but I think when it when you took into account the entire folks platform, especially as we developed it over like the year and a half following that, it really became 
much more useful than the other the other platforms. So I think just simply from giving I'm sorry, uh giving people u- very useful and very applicable tools so that they can use their algo, gialgo or dollars or a lot of other assets as well. It just started to attract more and more people and so yeah, it was really about listening to what people wanted and kind of trying to fold it all into one one big application. Yeah, I think that makes total sense. I mean, hearing what community is when it's trying to talk to you and then like uh, using the, the, the governance to make it easy for people to access. Actually, that, that is it's pretty awesome. And now like uh, when you are building a, a new platform, you are building a, a product, you are like uh, jumping into the decentralized world, you have to build a team. And the, the team is everything, you can tell. And how how the team I mean formed in the beginning I mean where were like uh, the the key skills that you need to to put together and and how did you find it I mean all of you guys are amazing. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we have a really amazing team. I I love everyone on the team. Super skilled. I was not um I was maybe like the tenth employee, yeah. so I wasn't involved in the earliest uh selections that happened between benedetto and pietro who's the creator of blockchain italia and they were hiring the real like original core team but i knew that some people came from within blockchain italia they were also already working for projects they had maybe interned gotten um some students from from like some good italian universities uh other people i think you know our coo our cto they just happen to be standouts, but I don't know the exact story of how they were found. Um, but I think overall, the folks, to work for folks, and I would say most DeFi platforms, and e- it could even apply to most blockchain platforms, like anything in the blockchain industry, you have to be very, very willing to like go two extra miles, you know, not just one. Because that effort, that extra effort you're going to put in will end up making a difference over time and so i think when we try to bring people into folks they have to have that energy of like anything in blockchain of a startup is already a moonshot so you have to know that going in that it's not going to be a job where you can just like you know chill out and work for like work casually in your hours like it's not even really like a nine to five job at all. It's almost like 24 hours at all the time because you never know when you could get a message, something can happen. If you're a developer, you might have to fix something in the middle of the night. If I'm doing partnerships, I might have a call at four in the morning with like someone in, in India or something. And like, I'm gonna go that extra mile to make sure that it happens. Um, so I think that that's what we focus on, just making sure we have really, really dedicated and driven people. And uh, still a small team. I think only like 20 people or less. So still still making more of the sum of our parts, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And about going that extra mile, I, I totally get it. I mean, here you have the roller coaster that you have in blockchain, the decentralization, the community, the business, the product, the protocol, the innovation. And y- y- you can be behind. I mean, you, you have to to run and, and you have to put the, the best of you. And that's what we are all seeing of folks. I mean, we are seeing all the products in the innovation. Now, are you actually on, on version, building the version three or can we hear about what are you building at the moment? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, so I don't know if we're saying it's the V3 because I think the V3 would be like a, maybe like a involve a UI redesign or something like that. But I would say that folks is building what I view as like a DeFi V3 application. So think about it this way. If V1 was one application on one chain, you take like Aave on Ethereum. That was just one app on one chain, did one purpose. Then V2 is taking that app and kind of splitting it up uh, between a bunch of different chains, which is what we see right now. Because that was the simplest way to get your app on new layer twos and new layer ones that are coming up, especially if they shared the same coding language, which a lot of uh, a lot of chains do with Ethereum. V3 of DeFi apps is like you, s- folks is in the position where we're able to now skip V2 
and we can go straight to v3 which is natively accessible across many chains and networks and the user is not having to stress about that at all so we're able to that's going to be coming soon probably in about two months we're going to be launching that using uh, wormhole and chainlink we're in the chainlink build program so we got early access to the ccip which is cross-chain interop protocol and for anyone watching and that's gonna be a real simply put it's just a really powerful way to enable this d5 v3 that i'm talking about and as we go along throughout this year more networks will be added to that idea and of course we're going to be able to take everything that we developed learned and like kind of cut our teeth in the algorand world bring it into the expansion and then once algorand is uh added to ccip support we can then fold in algorand as well and allow the algorand side of things to be a fully fledged part of that entire like big uh network that we're building i'm trying to come up, come up with cool names for it yeah. and um kind of is like a space station <laughs> like <laughs> you know like how sometimes there's there's concepts of a space station like a ring yeah. it has like a circular or and then it has like a the an axis yeah, yeah yeah it's like an axis in the middle that like the yeah. spokes connect to it's kind of how i started to imagine it so let me know what you think of that name as well. I, I think we can come up with an idea with the community. Uh, and, and then one, one another cool thing that I, I saw in Fox, and I think that is the, the most cool thing that we can have, is the multi-chain access. And that is, well, I think the future is multi-chain. We're, we're building that on Algorand. But how do you see that growth? I mean, how, I mean, how, how do you project that on the future? Yeah, I think um, not, of course, definitely multi-chain and uh, interoperability is going to be, I think it's going to be one of the biggest um, talking points and narratives of the next couple years because we're just starting to get into much better options for how to do that. Last time around, like last couple years, the bridges that were created were, you know, it was it was like a race to create bridges, a race to actually get something going. And um, a lot of them became very, uh, they were built unreliably. It led to a lot of money lost and hacks. So now with a little bit of experience, I guess, even though it was only like two years of experience uh, of the industries had with bridging, it's getting a lot, lot better. Um, some applications won't need to go multi-chain or cross-chain. Um, by the way, I'm going to say cross-chain because cross-chain is like accessible from any chain and multi-chain is like the V2 yeah. splitting it. I just want to make that differentiation. But some apps will be best served to be on one chain. Like Algorand's specific strengths will be, especially for an, for an application that the blockchain aspects are in the background mm -hmm. and it's not for DeFi users, like Flybondi yeah. with the tickets, like you're not you're interacting with their website in a very secured and controlled environment, you don't really need, it's unnecessary to go to multiple chains. Maybe they'll add it, but I guess at this point it wouldn't be. But with a DeFi application, folks, like we have to continue growing. And so we have to continue to try to bring in new people. Yeah. And um, I still maintain that folks making this step into new networks and then being able to establish some roots there get our footing and then bring Algorand in is by far the more uh, beneficial way for Algorand overall. Because if we just had Algorand as a spoke of the main, of the whole system upon launch, um, we would still have to go through some of those like trials and tribulations that I'm sure we will experience when we launch the cross chain. So it, I would rather, we have such a great like, foundation of product and community and you know a lot of users and a lot of capital on algorand it's not worth worth it for us to risk exposing that to like a new thing so soon it's better to like let's let's get ready there and then we'll bring it in at the perfect time Amazing, super excited about this. I would like to hear the community if we have questions, if we have comments, uh, if you'd like to know anything about Fox Finance. Uh, for you all, well, we are live streaming. Uh, just like uh, my marketing team just said, like uh, we have more than 100 people online. So hi to everyone. <laughs>
Uh, but yeah, I mean, thank you so much, Ivo, for this amazing presentation, for all the, the content, the information, and the, the data. I mean, deep data from Fox Finance, the team, the product, the growth, the, the future. I am very excited about this.